So tonight uh, we are in uh, 2 Timothy. We've been, we've been in 2 Timothy for a while. Uh, tonight's going to be a little bit different. Uh, each week we, we do take a portion of the text from Sunday and then, and then apply it specifically to the men in the room. Uh, and the ladies do the same, but for the, the, the women. But tonight is, is the end of a letter. Paul's been talking to Timothy for, for four chapters. He's at the very end of the letter. It's kind of coming to, to a close. And so uh, I'm going to talk about the three things that the, that the Apostle Paul brings up to Timothy in, in the part of his closing of his letter. And then I'm going to make um, uh, some application to us as individuals and then to us as men who lead our families. I know in here we have newly married folks. We have guys who are not yet married. Uh, we have uh, those who just have started to have kids. We have, we have those who've had multiple kids. And we have some whose kids are out of the house. So we have, we have the whole spectrum. But all of you are, are men, uh, you're, you're God's men, and we want to build you up and bless you. And so for 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 through 13 says, Do your best to come to me soon. This is Paul writing to Timothy. He wants Timothy to join him. He says, For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Christians has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. These two men were sent out on ministry assignments. Luke alone is with me. Uh, get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. Tychicus, I have sent to Ephesus again on a ministry assignment. When you have come, when, or when, when you come, bring the cloak that I, I left with Carpus at Torres, and also the books, and above all the parchments. Sunday, I, I didn't get a, a chance because I looked up at the time and and. I was over uh, where I should have been at that point uh, to talk about the, this this cloak and the the books and the parchments and then uh, so we're gonna we're gonna look at that tonight and so first I want us to see that Paul has this need for friendship right he has this longing for friendship and, and we spoke on Sunday that he's he needs he's looking for, uh, Timothy his son in the faith uh, Luke is with him he's his physician his friend also Luke writes the book of Luke the Gospel of Luke uh, Paul has a desire for friendship in, in Christian community. Uh, he is currently isolated in prison. And so uh, we see in, in verse 17 of chapter 4 where Paul says he was strengthened by the Lord Jesus. So he's not dependent on friendship as a, apart from being dependent on Christ. But he does see Christian friendship as a gift. And so I want us to see that tonight. We have a need for friendship. We have an, It's a gift uh, from God. We even see in early parts of Genesis uh, when Adam was created, God said it was not good for man to be alone. Uh, he needed a helper fit for him. It's the only thing that was not good about man was that he was alone. And so um, Paul is alone here. And so when, when Adam was created, he wasn't alone in the sense that God was with him. He was, he was with him. This was before sin entered the world. And so companionship, friendship, they're gifts that God gives to his children uh, to, to steward and to enjoy. And so uh, as a good father gives good gifts, which our God is a good father who gives good gifts, he gives us one of the gifts that he gives us. He gives us many gifts, and one of those is friendships. Friendships. If you're married, your first friendship is to your wife. That's your first, your first friendship. That was Adam's first friendship. And so uh, the, the, the next thing we see here is that Paul asks Hey, Timothy, when you come, I'm longing to see you. Son in the faith, when, I, when you see me, when, can you bring my cloak? This is a coat. It's because it's cold. Winter's coming. It's a very practical need. Very, very practical need. He's cold. It's likely that when Paul was arrested, they didn't give him time to grab his stuff. Imagine that. When they, they brought him uh, before, the, uh, before the, 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 the rulers in, in trial, they you know, just took him, and he, he left it. He, he had his, his coat with this guy, Carpus, at Torres. And so that's where his coat was. He says, hey, go swing by, pick up my coat, bring it to me, because the winter's coming, uh, and I'm cold. And I'm going to get even more cold, because they're not feeding me well, and you know I'm alone here. Bring my coat. It's a practical need. The point I want to make here is that there's a need uh, for not just friendships, but for practical needs to be met. Um, mankind is, is, is made for, for relationship with one another, uh, then also that we have practical needs. And so sometimes we can get super spiritual, or, or, or some Christians can, can just think, all I need is Jesus, and that's true. All you need is Jesus. That's all you need and Paul has lived a lot of life, shipwrecked, at sea, cold, abandoned. But still, if I can get a coat, like, can I get my coat? Some practical needs. If I can get a meal, like, I don't need, like, if I don't eat and I die and go be, I'm home with the Lord, 
Paul would say, hey, it's far better because I'm with the Lord. But, you know, every time I, my stomach growls, you know, and there's an opportunity to eat, I eat. So there, there's, a, there's there are practical needs. And so I don't want us to think that, that these practical needs are just some, some uh, just, you know, second class uh, teaching on, on, on some just real practical stuff that has nothing to do with some spiritual things. These are gifts God gives us. And so Christians uh, need to understand that friends are gifts from God to enjoy, to, to have, have relationship, have a camaraderie relationship with. But then also uh, there are practical needs that we need uh, met. And oftentimes one of the ways that God meets our practical needs is through Christian friendships. Hey, Timothy, brother in the faith, son in the faith, can you grab my coat and bring it to me? This is like uh, however many of you, uh, you know, out there have had children. And like there's a meal train. People are bringing food to you. Like have you eaten uh, elsewhere before? Yes. Have you made your own food? Yes. Has your wife made food? Yes. Have you gone to the grocery store? Yes. Have you ordered food to go? Yes. But hey, there's this opportunity when you, you first have a baby to, for people to bless you. And they give you, they bring you food. We, we do that a lot here. And so these are, these are ways in which Christians uh, can, can practically help and meet practical needs um, for, for, for God's people. And oftentimes there, there's this not just a meeting a practical need, but providing uh, a, a type of comfort, a type of enjoyment, a type of, uh, of, of a benefit there. Like a coat would keep one warm and comfortable it's not about comfortable Christianity. It's just meeting someone where they're out, blessing them, helping them. Paul's requesting, hey, I got a need. I need a jacket. Will you bring it to me? I need us to see that we were made not just for friendships. Uh, we need relationships, but there's practical needs we have. And oftentimes, one of the ways that God uses, get, uh, that blesses us with some of the practical needs we have are through our friendships, through our relationships. And so sometimes those needs are physical, sometimes they're emotional. And if your wife, they're intimate. You know, the only person that gets to fill those intimate needs is your wife. Don't have any of your friends do it. That's not, not okay. Not okay. Um, and so the reality is that Paul has had some of these friends leave. Like some dear friends, that they're out on ministry assignments. He has, he's named a few, like Titus is in Dalmatia. And Titus, Paul writes a whole letter to him, the book of Titus. We've, we studied it a, a few years back. And so Paul is, is saying, man, I have friends who are on ministry assignments and they're doing things and, and I miss them. I wish they were here. But Timothy, you're available. Hey, when you can, come to me while you're doing it. I have some practical needs. Can you pick up some things along the way? It's like, it's like the, you know, someone's coming over to your house and they call and say, hey, you need us to pick up anything at HEB real quick? Yeah, I need a bag of ice, or I need some tortillas, or I need, I need something. When you pick it up, this is the type of friendship I want us to see that, that is not just uh, uh, functional in, in, in Christian relationships, but, but ought to be common. The practical needs, just we love each other, we care for each other, we want to help one another, even some practical stuff. But then he talks about the books and above all the parchments. These are likely uh, either uh, some of the scriptures um, some, or some of the, uh, it's basically study material. Paul, in prison, is prioritizing his need for God's word, to study God's word. I mean, he's writing books of the Bible and he's still going, I want to study. I still need my scriptures. I still need my Bible. Bring me my Bible. I want to, I, I, he knows he's about to go see the Lord. He knows he is about to die. And be murdered, for, and he's, fin he's already said, I finished the race. But even though I'm done, I've crossed the finish line, Jesus is about to take me home. I'm about to get the, the crown of, of glory, the reward that, that he won on my behalf to me. Give, me. give me my books. I want to study. And so Paul has already said in, in chapter 3 that all scripture was God-breathed, and it's profitable for, for everything. It, there's a season and a time and a sufficiency of, of the scriptures for whatever anyone is going through. So Paul being lonely in prison, uh, longing for companionship, friendship, and, 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 and warmth, he, he still turns to God's word because he knows that it's profitable for any and every season that he is in, in every situation. The word of God is sufficient. So these three things are, are very practical things. Very practical. Friendship, uh, 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 warmth, clothing, practical needs, but then also God's word being the center of our life. And so what I want to set a scene for us here is that Paul has been in ministry. He's on mission. He's been you know, fulfilling the Great Commission. And now he's in prison. And I want you to think most of us are not going to leave here and go to prison for preaching tomorrow. 
Um, if we do, I want us to remember, there's this guy, Martin Luther, when he got put in prison for, for preaching during the Reformation, he had some friends, which is why we all need good, good Christian friends, who, who staged his death, kidnapped him, and got him out from being executed. Like, if I'm ever on trial, and I'm going to be you know, killed for preaching, if I'm in jail for anything else, don't worry about it. But if I am going to be put in prison for a really long time for, for preaching, just go ahead and kidnap me and then take me off to a castle. That's exactly what they did Luther, and he spent the rest of his days in a castle. I'm totally okay with that one. If you consider me a friend, please help a brother out in that moment. See, he had friendships, practical friendships. He has, uh, and so what I want to see is, is in mission, when you're on mission, you're, you're, you're on the battlefield, so to speak, um, there, there's a need for a place, a haven to, to not retreat from, but, to, but to, to go to, to be refreshed and encouraged. Uh, if you are, even modern today, if you're out on, in, in, in active duty or in war somewhere, there's still a military base that you can come back to that's safe and, and guarded and protected so for rest, recovery, and, and, and camaraderie. If you even every war movie you watch, and even even the Vikings did this, right? You know, you're watching the movies, and the, the Vikings show up in England. They're they're gonna they're gonna take the land. What are the first thing they do? They build a, a a fortress, a camp, a base camp. They go do their war. They come back, and there's food. There's for, for them. There's ale. You know, whatever they have. There's this 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 place for them, a haven for him after the battle to come back to to be encouraged, to be strengthened, to be nourished, to continue the mission. I want you to see this is this is woven into the DNA of every uh, uh, human being. Is has these three needs: this camaraderie, this friendship, uh, practical needs like food, clothing, shelter, uh, uh, but then also um, warmth and and and, and fun uh, to be enjoyed with with. God's people or with people, and then just the priority for the Christian is that it's got to be centered around God's word. I want you to see that that is, that is woven into the tapestry of, of, of mankind. You see it even in pagan cultures or in other uh, scenes of battle. Christianity, the mission of Jesus, is like a battle. We're not, we're not fighting according to flesh and blood. This isn't a war in the flesh, but it is one in the spirit. It's one where it might get someone in prison. It's one where uh, someone might be real discouraged by lies of the enemy. It's one where someone might feel uh, just wrung out and, and depressed because they've been pressing hard. And, and they, they're just like, like Elijah, when he, uh, when he called down fire from heaven, the prophets of Baal, they won a great battle. God's word was proclaimed, great victory. Just after that, he's depressed, he's crying, he's running from his life from Jezebel, and, he's, and, he, and what does God do? He says, hey, take some time, eat some food, take a nap. You see it all through the scriptures of, of while we're on mission, we need a place, we need a haven to, to rest from battle and where practical ministry needs can be met. So I want you to see, I want, to, I want you to see that, that that's, that's necessary for, for us as God's people to continue the mission that Jesus began. Now, I want to speak to us now in, in that haven, I believe, the first haven should be your home. Your home should be a haven of rest. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, all three of these things should be fulfilled. Uh, a need for your friendship, camaraderie, relationship in your home. Uh, your, your practical needs met, security, safety, warmth, clothing, shelter, uh, a place for, for, for freedom to enjoy your wife, your kids, whatever God has blessed you. And then it ought to be centered around the word of God. So that when you're out on the battlefield in your, your job or your vocation, wherever you, whatever you do all day long, and, and, and as the culture becomes increasingly hostile to Jesus and Christians, and you're out there doing your normal job and you're taking criticism from, from your coworker, uh, if you share your faith, because that's what God has called us to do, what he's not called us to do is be silent Christians. There's no Christians in the closet. He wants us out. Be public. Be open. Be, be proud. Proclaim who Jesus is, where you live, work, and play. That's what our mission is. We're called to. But then we're going to take some flack, maybe. It may cost you your reputation. It may cost you friendships. It may cost you your job. It may cost you your life, like the Apostle Paul. But the point is, there's no Christians who are not engaged in war. That we are, if you're not in, engaged in the warfare, you might not be a Christian. Or you might not be obedient. Put it that way. He wants you in the game. He wants you in the war. And so because of that, then, then after you, you come back home each night, do you have a place of safety? Do you have a place of comfort? Do you have a place where is it war at your house too? 
If it's war at your house, then you as the husband have work to do to cultivate in your home an environment that, that fosters the, the blessing of friendship with your wife. Uh, you, you have the, 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 the practical needs met, and then you're, it's a home that's centered around the Word of God. Additionally, if Paul wasn't in prison, guess where he would be after preaching? Probably someone's house, eating food, enjoying fellowship. Friendship, relationship. He, we always, with Jesus too, he was always showing up to people's house, showing up to Zacchaeus' house, the tax collector. He was showing up to houses, eating food, being refreshed, being encouraged, doing ministry, sharing in the blessing of friendship, relationship, practical needs being met, centered around the Word of God. And so every Christian home should be. Should be. This is. I, this is. This should be a goal of yours. Uh, the, the Christian home should be a place of warmth and enjoyment for friendships and for fun. Uh, I, I say fun because heaven's going to be fun. Heaven will be fun. If, it, it, if you don't think heaven's going to be fun, then why do you want to go? Like it's going to be a blast. It will. It's a place for family, uh, friends, and also outsiders, non-Christians, but but family, friends, and non-Christians to taste and see the fellowship of Christ. It's a place where that's on display. Additionally, it should be a place, the home, the Christian home, where Jesus and his word are central. It's the place where you you study. That's why you need the books. You need the parchments. It's the place where you learn. That's why my library is at home. And not in an office somewhere. It's, it's at my house. So it's accessible. Not just to me, but anyone who comes over. My kids. Found them reading a book the other day. They're learning to read words and they're just taking books. I'm like, I need that one. What? I'm glad you're reading that one. And so, man, it's your job. It's your job to lead and in, in, in set the tone in your home. Uh, and, and set the trajectory for this. Now, some of you, your, your home may not feel like a haven. It may feel like a battlefield. It may feel like a, 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 an overgrown garden where the weeds have, have overtaken and it's not a blessing. That is not an excuse. Your, step is, your, your next step is to live with your wife in an understanding way, love your, love your kids, but to, to get in there and, and, and clean, some, clean some things up, uproot some things, set a new tone, set a new trajectory, get, have different vision. If you don't have vision for your home to be a place, a haven, to, to be a blessing to you, your wife, your kids, and to, to your friends, and to your out, and to non-Christians who can come in and taste and see the goodness of the Lord Jesus, and that he is central, and his word is central. If you don't have that, you must cultivate that. At first, you might need to clean some things out. And so that's your job. And so I want to I help cast vision and, and equip us towards that end tonight. Because if we don't do that, either two options are going to happen. Number one, you're going to go out on the battlefield, you know, on mission for Jesus, seeking to make dedicated disciples in all the spheres that God has placed you in. And you're going to come home, and if it's not a, it's not a place of refuge uh, and encouragement and strength and, and camaraderie and friendship, then, then you're going to have another battle. I need you to see it will be a battle. Satan is not going to take a break once you get home. Adam and Eve did not have a demonic attack on their life till they were married and had a call on their life. Period. It happens. There will be a war on the home front. And so it, you, you must take this, it, it, you must be intentional with this. You must take time. You, must need, you need the blessing of God and the word of God to form and lead and guide and empower you. But it must be a task that you endeavor to do. For if you don't, then you will be at war on both fronts. And what will end up happening is you'll you will, you will punt on, your, on the warfare to, to, for Jesus' mission. Just not do it because it's too hard. And then you just won't also not cultivate the right. The, you won't you love your wife like Christ loves the church. You won't love your kids like God has called you to. You won't lead and love and serve in your home in the way that Christ has called us to. You'll just punt on both. That's the tendency of men. Because it's hard. We, we inherited that from Adam. We repent of that continually. And we take up the mantle that Jesus took up. Responsibility, action, love, service. Fight the good fight. And so, I want you to think of your home as a gift from God. Whether it's you own it, you're in an apartment, doesn't matter. The place where you have, where you get mail delivered to, that place that home, I want you to think of it as a gift from God to steward and to cultivate. To cultivate it in such a way that, that the blessings, I don't have time to get into it right now, but uh, the blessings of Psalm 128 happen. 
or your wife is nourished and cared for, your kids are like olive shoots around your table. That's what the psalmist says is the good life. It, it, you, it's a home that is intentionally worshiping Jesus with everything we say and everything we do. It's not just, just we, we, we pray sometimes, but, but the word of God forms everything we do. So our relationship with our spouse, if you're married, we, we look at the scriptures like living with our wife in an understanding way. We look at Ephesians 5, to love our wife like Christ loves the church. How we do relationship with our wife is formed by the Bible. How we educate, raise, love, serve our kids is formed by the Bible. By the way we feast and celebrate and enjoy the good things God has given us is formed by the Bible. Ecclesiastes it, it speaks frequently about just enjoying the, the wife of your youth, the, the, the food around your table, the wine that you get, enjoying the things of God. For this life is short and God has given you these gifts to enjoy. None of you ever give anyone a gift for the purpose of for them putting it on the shelf. Unless it's, a, it's a trophy or something, but... Likely, you give people a gift for them to enjoy. God has given you the gift of a home, friendship, relationship, to cultivate and to enjoy. And so, this, this home, I want you to see your house must, is, 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 as a refuge, as a, as a, a haven of rest from, from battle. It's, a, it's also a ministry outpost to minister to your wife, your kids, and to your friends, Christian brothers and sisters who come to your house. And to refuel them, to bless them. But also a place to show hospitality to non-Christians so they can taste and see God's goodness. So t- tonight, I'm going to, after we get done here, we'll go home, and I'm going to spend the, my evening, stay up later than I, I would like to, but I'm going to spend time cultivating my wife, spending time with my lo- wife, conversations. She's going to come out of, out of a time of teaching. She's, gonna have, she's had a long day. I haven't got to see her today. I'm going to spend time with my wife. I spend a lot of time cultivating that friendship. That's the first and primary, f- foremost friendship. If you don't have a, if your wife is not your best friend, cultivate that so she would be. She would be. After that, you can have Christian brothers as friends. Hopefully you have some here tonight. And so tomorrow night, actually this is not a normal week for me, but tonight a lot of time with my wife after this. Additionally, tomorrow night, there's a ministry friend who's in town. He's a church planter. Uh, he and his wife are coming over. We're going to have uh, just, we're going to hang out, and it's going to be a time for us to invest in them and to encourage them. We want our home to be a place to ref- them to be refueled. They've come to San Antonio to kind of take a step back from ministry for rest, refueling, revitalization. We want to bless them unto that end. We want to use our house as a place to do that. And then this weekend, I'll spend time with my brother-in-law. I'm going to spend time with my kids. We're going to spend time as, as a family, cultivating relationships, having good time, enjoying the gifts that God has given us. It's just, these are, these are the sphere. I want you to see that these are opportunities that if you, if you look at, you have intentionality, they can, they can, over the course of time, you cultivate those things, that they're blessings, they're, they're things that God has given you to rejuvenate you, to encourage you, to strengthen you so you can get back there out on the battlefield, to do the mission. And so I want to leave us with five things uh, to, to think about in order to cultivate this. First, prayer. Prayer. Is there any notes if you, if, you got, if you picked them up on your way in prayer? We've got to seek God. Uh, God, how do we want my house to, to how, do, how do I organize my house? How do I lead my family? How does my wife come alongside me? You've got to ask God how he wants you to, to, to accomplish what we just talked about. You've got to seek him. Ask him. How, God, how do we worship you? How do we, how, how, what do you want from us? We seek him in prayer. And then you ask God for, for vision. God what, God, what do you want? God, give me a vision for my family. Give me a vision for my, my relationships. Give me a vision for how we can use and steward our relationships, our home, our stuff in order to glorify you, to be a blessing, to, to have a refuge, to do ministry, to, to serve people, and to welcome outsiders. Jesus, what is the unique application for me and my family? Each one of you have different families. Each one of you have different seasons of your life. Everything will look quite different. Some of you are introverted. Some of you are extroverted. Some of you, your wives are introverted. And some of you, uh, your wives are extroverted. That's a conversation that has to come together. But what is the unique application of how you're going to work out this in your life so that you and your family can be on mission and revitalize together? And then, and then you look at your, your life the, by the providence of God. Maybe there's some, some things that are hindering you from, from doing certain things. That's okay. There's desire. There's opportunity. Seek the Lord through prayer 
and, vi- and then get vision from him, but you got to lead out in the vision for your family. The third is planning. All right, now, got to make a plan. Some of you are great planners. Some of your wife's a great planner. If you're not a great planner, honey, here's the vision. Help me, help me make a plan. Like, what will the family, what will family worship look like? What will uh, date nights look like? What will uh, cultivating a friendship with my wife look like? What will raising our kids look like? What will the education in the home, uh, in our home, what will it look like? What will, how will we serve people? How will we bless people? How will we encourage people in our home? How can our home be a place of equipping? Going back to the Reformation, Martin Luther, his home, where we get the, some of y'all are familiar with um, the magazine that's now called Table Talks. It's the, the term Table Talks came from uh, this, this, what was going on in the Reformation. Luther would have these people over at his house. And he was just talking, equipping other guys, other planters, other families who would go continue the, the mission of the Reformation across England and across Europe. And so they were coming over and Luther's just talking and and teaching and encouraging and equipping over food, over feasting, over fun, a lot of laughing. But people were writing the stuff down, everything we were saying. Like a stenographer is out there just going, hey, everything Luther's saying, even his crass jokes were being written down. Stuff that he wishes wouldn't be written down. They were writing down. And so the reason, and they were called table talks because they were having these talks around the table. How are you going to use your, 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 your home to do things like that? That fueled the Reformation. Just think about it. Your home could be an equipping ground to equip people in this city to make more disciples and see the city transformed. But you gotta, you got to view your home that way. Every one of you, God wants to do that. And the fourth thing, outside of planning, you gotta, you got to communicate. If you're married, you got to communicate with your spouse. If you're single and you have roommates, you got to communicate with your roommates. you got to communicate. Communicate, communicate, be on the same page, communicate expectations, and then be open-handed. Because things can change. Sometimes you can get so focused on the plan that you miss the heart behind the plan. Are you, is this encouraging? Is it a blessing? Do you find out that, man, we, we, we endeavored to do this and this isn't working? All right, change it. Change it. How are you going to host non-Christians? Maybe you, you've, you had a poor strategy. You're going to think of a new strategy. That's awesome. Communication. And number five and lastly, enjoyment. You worked the plan. You, you, you prayed about it. You've cast vision, you're trusting the Lord, you've made a plan, you've communicated with your spouse and your family. Now work the plan, work the plan and enjoy the process and enjoy the fruit of your labor as God grants you fruitfulness in these relationships, the gifts that God has given you. Most of what I shared about what's gonna happen tonight, tomorrow, this weekend is, is fruit of labor that we've already endeavored in. So like I know it's going to, I'm going to enjoy time with my wife tonight. I know I'm going to enjoy, uh, we're going to enjoy friendship uh, tomorrow. I'm, we're going to enjoy relationships this weekend. See, men, God has designed you to be and lead and be a part of Jesus' mission and lead Jesus' mission. But you have a deep need for friendship. First for your right wife and then Christian brothers. Also, you have practical needs. A lot of times guys don't want to talk about the practical needs. You have emotional needs. You have spiritual needs. And then lastly, the reminder that God's word is the one that must be priority and center that forms what our needs are, forms how our needs are met, and forms how our friendships are designed for the flourishing and good of of humanity and ourself to lead us, empower us, encourage us to continue the mission. I know I talked about a lot, try to talk quick. So we have now time to enter into a discussion. So let me pray for you and then we'll we'll send you all to your tables. Lord Jesus, would you... Make sense of all that I've said tonight. Talked fast, tried to be clear. Um, but Lord, you are you're, you're the one who truly is the one who has to apply things to our heart, make things make sense in our mind, and lead us in, in your way. So would you equip these men, bless these men, and as they go to the table, may they leave here encouraged and strengthened. Um, may this conversation tonight even be for them a haven, a rest, a place for encouragement from battle, a place where they can be ministered to and minister to one another. Bless these men unto that end. In Jesus' name, amen.